to bring in Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse out of Rhode Island on the Judiciary Committee. And Senator, thank you for your time and good afternoon to you. In a good couple minutes that we have here, I asked Senator Barrasso what his question is. What will be your question filed through Chief Justice, Senator? We're still working out exactly how to, how to do that. I think we've got a number of important questions. You know, there's a lot that we don't know uh, still, and there's a lot that the White House lawyers never touched on that we still need to understand if we're going to make Senator. a fair decision. Well, a really good one is why did they never mention the edit that uh, Giuliani tried to get into President Zelensky's uh, talking points targeting the Bidens and Burisma? They pretend that Giuliani was just a distraction. Uh, they say that Bolton is just uh, trying to sell his book. Uh, but General Kelly says Bolton is more reliable uh, on this than uh, the president. And we know that Bolton said this was a drug deal, and we know that uh, the president's people, including his agent Giuliani, tried to get this text about the Biden Burisma investigation into Zelensky's speech. And none of that was even touched okay, on. It's so a little that, bit strange. That, that, that's one question. What did you think of Alan Dershowitz's argue last, argument last night about abuse of power? He says abuse of power throughout American political history is an accusation. Well, he started off on a bad note because he told us that the standard we had to meet as senators was proof beyond a reasonable doubt, which every senator knows is wrong. So that didn't get him off to a very good start. Then when he started talking about how this had to be a criminal law, he had to reflect that, yes, he had said the opposite before, and yes, the weight of current authority is completely against him. And then he turned on himself, and he said that we shouldn't be looking at the president's intent, when in any criminal case, intent is at the heart of the proceeding. So, the, so I take you could it see you, the heads you, you of all the prosecutors you, in the room snap up as he said that. It you weren't no convinced sense. by his argument. A few other things here just in the no, moment. No, I thought it actually was embarrassing. Wow. Alan Dershowitz's presentation was embarrassing? I thought so. It was really unfortunate. If we move to the question of witnesses, uh, I take it you'd like to hear from John Bolton. Would you also be open to hearing from Hunter Biden and his father? Look, we've got a couple of hundred years of precedent and practice and tradition about how uh, witnesses get selected, and that is that the parties select the witnesses. So what I want to see is, we can be fair about this, if the House managers want three or four witnesses, I'm not saying the White House shouldn't also get to choose three or four witnesses, whatever it is, I'm totally okay with it being fair, but I don't want to get into a quid pro quo about who gets what witness, a Wheeler deal, when we're actually in a case that should be resolved on principles, and it's about a Wheeler dealer quid pro so quo it's deal. So it's not one for one in your view. You, you don't want it anyway. I'm willing way, for it to be one for one in, in terms of both parties having the ability to present an equal number of witnesses. I think that would be a fair exchange. But I think for us to be swapping out who the witnesses should be, the White House should choose what witnesses it wants to present. And if it wants to present Hunter Biden, live with that choice. Okay. We know who we want to present and what we want to present are witnesses who actually know what happened in this thing that uh, Bolton called a drug deal. Senator, thank you for your time.